Somehow you made it through the first half of the Titans game. Let's go take a look inside the locker room and see what's going on. Chaos There's down here. Where are we? I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the test. Team of destiny. We're gonna win the Super Bowl. Good. Do you feel it? No. What is cooling? What's going on? Tennessee Titans and Music City Nation. Man, we have got to get some vibe going on here in Tennessee right now. There's a lot of things we need to talk about with this football team and a lot of things that we need to do to get this team in the right direction. So we're going to talk about free agency strategy, the roster, how to improve it, and get into a seven-round mock draft. Without further ado, though, let's deconstruct this roster, talk about the areas that they have to improve this offseason. And it starts with the offensive line. And it's not just the players, it's the coaching, too. When you have Brian Callahan, Bill Callahan coming in, and they just have, I feel like, this offensive line, they've got some talent here, and they've got to do a better job. So it's partially coaching scheme that they need to improve upon. It's not just the players. With that being said, like they still need upgrades. Left tackle, you're good to go. You found your franchise left tackle, or if you want to move them over to right tackle, if you draft a left tackle, I don't know how that's going to work. To be honest with you, most of the times, players typically want to stick at the left tackle position. They aren't so keen to move over to right tackle. And J.C. Latham absolutely can handle the left tackle duty. I've watched all 22 film on him. Really am a big fan of Latham. So I feel good about that. You got Peter Skaronsky at left guard. You got Lloyd Cushenberry. I do think they can do a little bit better job, uh, but they're fine. They should be good starters for the future. Dylan Radins. I'm glad that they're sticking him at right guard and keeping him there because so much through his career, he's been left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right guard. It's been all over the place. He's got talent. I, I don't deny that with Radins. He's been inconsistent as a pass protector, but I know the talent is there. So he is a free agent. We could work out an extension because there may not be a whole ton of other options. We'll take a look at it in free agency, but it certainly is something that they're going to have to consider. And I would imagine a contract would be pretty favorable on both sides. It would be something where there's not a lot of guarantees. So that's something we'll, we'll look at a little bit more here in a little bit. Nicholas petit Friere though, is the biggest need on this offensive line. This, no matter what, you have to find a right tackle of the future, whether that's draft, whether that's free agency. This is the number one need on the offensive line, maybe even on the offense in general. It's been a big problem for them. Jalen Duncan, I see more as a guard. So, And you got interior depth that they could use as well for the future. So offensive line, we need some depth. We need a right tackle for sure, maybe even a right guard, depending on what happens with the Raidens. Let's go on to the receiving core, which is underperformed massively. Calvin Ridley, I know I rank him as a plus starter, but honestly, this season, he's barely played like a starter. He is so inconsistent and has to just play better. It is what it is. Has to live up to that contract. It's not all on him, so I certainly will say that too. He has the talent still. We know that with Calvin Ridley, and he shows flashes of it. Hopefully, he gets back to more of that play here very, very soon because they're going to need him. And, and quarterback is a problem, absolutely. And that's one of the reasons, too, that there's been problems with the receiver position for this team. And I will say, I, I really respect Rand Cath Carthron for trading DeAndre Hopkins and Ernest Jones. I thought that was a really, really nice move for those players. You get them on teams now that they can go win and have a chance to win a Super Bowl. Sometimes it's not always about, and it was a win, too. I feel like they did a good, he did a great job, especially with the Ernest Jones thing, getting, a, you know, basically an extra pick in a, in what he gave up for it. So really good job there in terms of a GM. But in terms of this receiving core, absolutely, this is a need. We're going to be looking at it in free agency in the draft. We'll see what we can do in free agency. I'm not going to go out and pay another big receiver or anything like that. And a lot of times I think that's really, you got to be careful with that. So Nick Westbrook Akine is a free agent. Bringing him back, I think, adds value as a special teamer and what he contributes to. He's just a tough-nosed guy and certainly somebody on this roster we can keep. Besides that, Tyler Boyd is also a free agent, and I don't know what, what's going to happen there. Maybe he wants to go to a team that can win, so we're going to have to make some decisions in the receiving room. On to the tight end position. Not super worried about this. I think you got your one-two with Chiggs and, and Wiley. Not super worried at all. I think it's a solid group. You can bring back Nick Vanette, who's a good blocker. In general, this is not a huge priority of a need. It could be something they look at, but once again, I don't think it's a huge need. It is a good tight end class, so I wouldn't outrule that, but I think Wiley and Chiggs are just fine with that. On to the running back room. This is also a good position. This is a spot where you got Tony Pollard and Taji Spears. If Spears can just stay healthy, man, they got a killer one-two punch. Pollard's been really good this season, kind of bouncing back. They're using him more like Dallas did when they had Ezekiel Elliott in a good exchange rotation, so this is keeping Pollard more fresh. So I really like the way that they're deploying him. So these two running backs, I feel good about it. It's an explosive one-two punch. You got Will Levis at quarterback, though. And now this is where it gets interesting, right? 
it's so frustrating because I think Will Levis, he has all the talent. It's not, I think, like, I know he's got the talent. He's got a rocket arm. He's got athleticism. He just does not play like he understands. Like, he plays like he's has no clue how to play quarterback. That's just what it is. And he's, he's decision-making is horrible. It's horrendous at times. So if you can hone that in, if you can get him some more developmental time, I like it. And that's why I'm not ready to give up on Will Levis. I know a lot of Titans fans are, and I, I totally get it. It is frustrating watching Titans games. But at the end of the day, I still see the talent, and I see these quarterbacks. They give up on quarterbacks way too early. So I don't want to get rid of him, and I don't want to say, hey, let's go draft a quarterback either potentially at the number two, number one, wherever they're picking in the draft. That's something that's going to be on the table for them. But I also think that this is something we'll have to look at in multitude realms, whether that's a free agent quarterback, whether that's a mid-round pick. That's kind of where I'm at right now at the quarterback position. It's certainly something we have to add, whether it's free agency or the draft. Well, let's go on to the defense now and start with the interior of the defensive line, which this is really good. Between Jeffrey Simmons, who's a beast, Tavondre Sweat, who already looks like a beast. I mean, it's like there's number 93. He, you can always just tell who Tavondre Sweat is out there. He is just a massive monster that is so difficult to block. It's going to be a problem for them. So those two guys for the future, I'm not worried about that. Sebastian Joseph Day, they could use another defensive end. And we'll look at it maybe on free agency on the cheap. It's not something they need to spend a whole ton of money. And in the draft, maybe it's a mid-round pick for the future sort of thing. But overall, not a huge area that they have to prioritize in this draft. you got your two stars. On to the edge position. This is an area they could look at for the future. Aaron Key's been good. Harold Landry's good. So they've got two solid guys. They don't have a true number one. They don't have a difference make like a huge, crazy, you know, top tier edge rusher, pass rusher. You don't have to have that. They've been okay getting after the quarterback. And it certainly helps when you have those two monsters in the middle like that. But this is something we could look at ideally on day two, at least, and thinking about the, for the future. But I certainly see this as something that they're going to have to look at for the future, if nothing else, for some depth behind Arden Key and Harold Landry. On to the linebacking core. Another area that is kind of a bit of a weakness, but at the end of the day, like I, I, they've invested with Cedric Gray. I like Cedric Gray coming out of North Carolina. I think he'll be really good when he gets back from injury and going into next season long term. I think he'll be a starter for this team. And Kenneth Murray, I think he fills into that spot. I like Jerome Baker. I actually like that move for them. And Jerome Baker now gets a chance to get a contract. He's in the prime of his career. He is a good football player. He's an athletic guy. He has that versatility. He can go back in coverage. So hopefully he can earn a contract for them. That's going to be something to watch out for. And we'll talk about that in free agency too. And you got some depth, right? Jack Gibbons, who is a free agent, should be able to bring back him on the cheap. I believe he's a restricted free agent. You got a lot of restricted guys who are also special teamers out here that they can bring back on the cheap. So I'm not like overly concerned about this linebacker position, especially with the other areas of need on this roster. On to the cornerback room. It's good. It's really, really solid. Just got to get healthy. Ch Chidobia Wuze is injured. He's on IR. Jerry Steen, it's been solid. Maybe not his best season thus far in his NFL career, but he's still really good. Roger McCreary is really good in the slot. And you got guys stepping up. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. has been a beast, man. I'll tell you, over these past couple of weeks, stepping in for Cheeto, he's been really good. Daryl Baker Jr. has been a nice rotational player. So, like, you've got depth. You've got your guys. I feel good about this situation. Not a need for the team. Maybe you go throw out a DB in the late in the draft. Safety-wise, this is something they'll have to look at. Amani Hooker is going into the last year of his contract in 2025. So thinking about 2026 and beyond, if you don't re-sign Hooker, which wouldn't be a problem, but even Quandre Diggs is a free agent now. So finding somebody here and maybe, you know, you only bring in a veteran and then you got to think long-term. So this safety to me is like a, a day two slash early day three type of need. Like I said, Gray was a pick last year in the fourth round. Something in that mold to develop for a year. And then you have your future safety. I just ran away. I ran so far to free agency. I don't care. That doesn't quite work. But ran Catheron. Here we go. Let's get into the free agency strategy. And I'm going to go ahead and team cut wise, I'm going to let go of Kenneth Murray. Save $7.5 million. Just felt like that, you know, he's $10 million on the cap for next season. I didn't see the pay there. I'd rather go ahead and pay a guy when we get into the team signings, a guy like Jerome Baker. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's go on to the offense side of the ball here. I'm going to let go of Mason, Mason Rudolph. We're going to look at the quarterback position here really, really soon. Bring back a couple of guys in here. Julius Chestnut on the cheap. He's a restricted, easy to bring back. Nick Westbrook, Bikini. I do prioritize bringing him back with that special team's ability. And he's just been a scrappy receiver when healthy and on the field. So certainly a guy you keep in the locker room. Nick Vanette, nice backup to have at the tight end position. Number three guy, inline blocker, can pass protect. 
uh, Andrew Rupsix, uh, bring him back on the cheap, uh, restricted. You got Dylan Radins. And now here we go. Big signing on the offense side of the ball. We are going to re-sign him. I know Titans fans might be up and down on this one. But if you keep him at one position, if we say, hey, you are sticking to right guard, we're going to let you focus a full offseason on one position, he might be a lot better. And the talent is there with the guys. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and give him a contract extension. And it probably would not be a ton of guaranteed money. So for example, a three-year, $24 million deal, which is based off like an Ezra Cleveland sort of contract. Maybe you have like $10 million of that guaranteed. It's only like a one-year $10 million with an option to get out of it sort of thing after one, maybe two seasons at max. That would be kind of the contract details of that. You bring back your long snapper, bring back Nick Folk, trusty, trusty Nick Folk, still an unbelievable kicker. Why not? If he wants to play in the NFL, absolutely, he's coming back. Ryan Stonehouse we give an extension to there. Defensively wise, bring back some depth here with Kendrick Corbone and Ollie Gay. Jerome Baker is our big signing here on defense in terms of a re-sign. $24 million over three years, $8 million average. Puts him in line with you know, that mid-tier linebacker, but I certainly think he has the talent and somebody that you know, gets a chance to prove himself this year for the Titans and how he fits with that defense. That's going to be huge, too, to see how that goes with Kennard and that defense. And then Jack Gibbons, some depth. Otis Reese, more depth as well. Special teams ability. Daryl Baker, bring him back for $1.5 million. Nice to have that fourth, fifth corner there. And Mike Brown, some safety help as a restricted free agent. Let's go on to the sign period. We've got a lot of money. But I'm not, I don't want to go crazy, okay, at the same time. We can't go out and, you know, be malicious with our money. I have to be smart about this. I'm going to sign Sam Darnold. Here is our big signing. One year, $25 million. He might be looking for more of a long-term thing, especially after this Minnesota Vikings season that he's had thus far. So that's going to be something to keep an eye out on. But a one-year deal would be nice for this team. Gives him flexibility where you still develop Will Levis and see if you have anything there. And you give a, sh a shot to Sam Darnold, see if he has the cohesion with Bill Callahan. And if that does work out, then you look at that long-term extension. I think this would be a win-win for Sam Darnold because he gets a chance to be the starter right away. If he proves himself and is really good, especially with Callahan and that system, then, then you look at that four- or five-year extension with Sam Darnold, and then he could get a payday. So I think it'd be a win-win for Sam Darnold and then also for this Tennessee Titans team because it at least gets you a quarterback in the room that you feel good about to be a starter for you. And then also, you know, long-term, hopefully. Noah Brown going to bring him in. He's always a, a reliable fourth receiver to have, especially if you have injuries, which Burks has been kind of injured a lot. So bring him in there, $4 million. Storm Norton, be a swing man for you. He has been a nice quality swing man for Atlanta, and that's kind of what I'm looking at here, $2 million. Aaron Stinney's been a good, reliable player too. He has versus to be able to play center and guard, so you get your fourth offensive lineman there. And then on defense, we go Joseph Asai, some familiarity with Brian Kim. I mean, obviously defense side of the ball. But anyway, bring him in as a uh, third edge rusher for the team on a four year, $4 million contract. One year gives him a chance to prove himself a little bit more too. Tayshawn Wharton has been nice for the Chiefs. He'll kind of stick in to that Sebastian Joseph Day role on that defensive end and end up playing somewhere along the lines of like 40% snap share. And he'll be certainly like a situational pass rusher for them. And then Jordan Fuller, going to be a one-year, $4 million deal that could be up to $8 million with incentives, depending on how much he plays. He's kind of been a little banged up, so that's why I'm, I'm also adding some incentives into that contract for him. But he'll be starting at one of those safety spots next to Imani Hooker. Okay, let's take a look at the roster now after free agency. Definitely, you're going to have to let me know what you think of the Sam Darnold signing. I like Sam Darnold and the way he's played. I think it would give him a massive upgrade at the quarterback position, at least right now. And then you could work on that long-term extension if he plays well for the system and you go from there. And it also gives Will Levis a chance to compete and still would see what you have with him. Cause once again, I still like Will Levis and I still think that there's a lot of talent there to be had. Just need some more developing some serious time in hand. But in terms of needs going into this draft, right tackle is the glaring need in my view that we weren't able to fill. And that's the thing you go into the free agency situation here. And I felt like it was almost easier to get a quarterback. You could even go after a Justin Fields too, would be a good option, but I feel like right tackle, there's really no starting right tackles in free agency. You've got Morgan Moses out there. You've got maybe Jedrick Wills could be an option. You could move over back to right tackle. He played at Alabama at right tackle, so that could be an option too. There just weren't a whole ton of options that I felt great about. So that's why going into the draft, I feel like there might be a better option in that route than there is in free agency. So that will be kind of where I'm really looking at in the draft. Receiver still an early need for this team. I don't feel confident 
in this receiving core where it's at right now. So I will be 100% looking at that as well. So those to me are the top two needs going into this. Defensively wise, my top two needs are going to be safety and edge rusher. Uh, in whichever order, I think both are pretty big needs for the future and something I'll be looking at pretty early in the draft, as early as I can, at least in this draft. Besides that, though, I feel like they're in a pretty good spot. We'll draft some defensive interior players some later on day three options and, and et cetera, but nothing else besides that is too crazy of a need. Let's go on to the draft, though, and my first pick going to be Will Campbell. So, yeah, we're going back-to-back -back offensive linemen in the first round for this Tennessee Titans team. Actually, wouldn't it be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, three years in a row? But, hey, Dallas Cowboys did that, and they ended up getting their stalwart offense alignment for the future in Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, and uh, Travis Frederick. I believe they did that a, a while back, and that was a really successful move. Let's hope we can get the same formula here. But Will Campbell, huge fan of Will Campbell, and I do think in this tackle class, he is the clear-cut, top-tier tackle. The big question with him does he have the arm length? That's really the only thing that I really question with Will Campbell is can he, does he have that arm length? But Ryan Ramchek, he could be in that sort of a mold in somebody that I think will be a really, really nice right tackle for this team. He has right tackle experience going back into high school. So you plug him in right there. You keep JC Latham over at left tackle. I feel great about this offensive line now with these two guys protecting your quarterback, Sam Darnold, Will Levis, et cetera, in the room. On to round number two. Trey Harris, old Miss wide receiver. He's been so good this season. He's got excellent body control, excellent hands, and he's got subtleness to his game for a guy his size. He's not an elite athlete. Okay, I think he's going to be more of a 4-5, low 4-6 guy, but he does have enough acceleration where I don't worry about him being a J.J. Arcea white side or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like He's got burst. He's able to get off press coverage and stack DBs too. And he's good on slants, really good on slants. He'll be that really, really nice possession ball win or two on the outside that the, the Titans just don't have right now. So he certainly adds into that mold, the Traylon Burks. I think that that's what they were hoping for him to be. Let's go on to round number four. Keon Sa, former Michigan Wolverine, transferred over to Alabama this season. And he's had some ups and downs, no doubt about it. And obviously the Georgia game was a little bit of a down moment, but he's bounced back. And he had a good week versus Tennessee. I watched that game. Had a pass breakup versus, I uh, forget who it was receiver-wise, but he had a nice pass breakup. And he's got the athletic profile you look for, great size too. He's not an elite athlete, but he's got good burst and a solid ability to, to range and be fine in two high coverages and play single high if you need him to. Ultimately, he's got the, the ability and the size, the speed, the athleticism. Just needs to get a little bit better in his zone feel, in my opinion. At least going back and watching the Michigan tape really what I'm basing this off of I feel like his zone feel was a little little raw at that point and it, it looks like it's gotten better but still at times his ball skills needs to be improved so just kind of a point there with him but certainly has the upside to to be a, a really good safety and a guy that you could sit for a season behind Imani Hooker and Jordan Fuller in this case scenario and then develop for a season and be the long-term starter and play a rotational role early on let's go into their next fourth round pick Derek Moore we're going back to Michigan here uh, they've drafted a Michigan edge rusher in Jalen Halo before, but now you go get Derek Moore. Raw prospect, he may come back another season just because he's a little underdeveloped with his strength profile. And also his pass rush plan is very limited. It's kind of like a speed rush and a bull rush right now. That's really what he brings to the table. But he's got the tools. And whereas a guy like uh, Josiah Stewart's a little bit more refined as a pass rusher right now, he doesn't have maybe the size that Derek Moore has. Moore has more arm length, more size, more of a prototypical build that you would look for. A guy that can also drop back into coverage. He's got the athleticism too and, and burst and explosion. So a developmental guy, if he does come out on in round number four to let him sit behind Arden Key, be a rotational player, and you think about him for the future there. And even, you know, with Harold Landry, who's getting a little bit older now too. Let's go into the interior of the defense line. Riley Mills, a guy that has good, good size, really good size. Six foot five plus, uh, 297 pounds. So around that 300 mark. He is going to be a nice size eater, can fill in for that Sebastian Day sort of role on that front. And Tayshawn Wharton will be your situational player. So between those two guys, that's kind of your rotation on down and distance. But Riley Mills certainly has the traits. He's got decent enough explosiveness too off the line, especially for his size. He's got good traits. Just kind of raw. It's kind of funny because Harold Cross is more of the technician. Cross is more of the prototypical size guy. You see what I'm saying? But it's just like they need to kind of put work together. But anyway, Riley Mills, nice prospect to take on day three. Let's go on to our next fifth round pick. Will Howard, quarterback, Ohio State. 
He's got the raw tools as well. I mean, he's not like he's not an athlete or quite crazy athlete, but he's got a good arm and certainly a guy you take on day three. I've not watched, to be honest with you, a whole ton of his Ohio State tape just yet. I studied him over at Kansas State. And I'm like, yeah, this guy's a good day three option to take with his arm talent. And he's got enough athleticism to get the job. He's a sneaky runner, and then that's just fine. But he's going to be a third quarterback for you behind Will Levis and Sam Darnold. Just take another shot, right? And with our quarterback room that doesn't have anybody locked up long term, that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Hopefully, at least something else, a long term backup. On to round number six, Sage Ryan. Here's a guy that's kind of a two way player, can play corner, can play safety. And that's kind of what I'm drafting for some versatility here. But I do see him as more of a safety prospect. He's got good athletic profile, he's got good explosiveness. I, he's not great as a corner. And that's why I say he's more of a safety prospect, which is fine. That's kind of what I'm drafting him. He can be like maybe a, a developmental safety. If you do like Ovamani Hooker next season, he can be something like that, who can play in the box, can play up top, give you that two-way versatility. He's got good bloodlines too with the Folk family. So he's somebody that if he can work on his, if he wanted to play on, at corner, he's going to have to work on his press technique. It was really, really bad when I was doing a film study, got beat off the line over and over again. And that's why I think he'd be better, you know, either off in slot formation or in the box slash more in in the deep formation. So and he's going to be a good special team early on with his athleticism. Final pick of the draft, Michael Ford Jr., Kansas guard. He is a two way player in terms of versatility. He's played left guard and right guard throughout his entire career there. So a lot of experience at both positions. He's got good arm length for sure. So for a guy six foot three, really good arm length. He's got good power in his upper body. And somebody that, you know, gives you that versatility is going to help you out on their offensive line for injuries and can be kind of like Aaron Stinney for that offensive line for the future. Anyway, uh, areas he needs to work on in terms of why he's not a higher pick. He doesn't have the agility. I think his feet really get crossed up way too many times. He gets thrown off balance quite a bit, too. Can get acceptable to like push pull moves uh, quite often. So he'll end up on the ground quite a bit. So that's just something he needs to really hone his skills on and, and get better at. And again, he's not an elite athlete by any standards or anything like that, but certainly a nice guy to take here on day three. So that's going to be our draft and and our offseason recapping everything up here and what we've been able to do. We added a controversial signing here with Sam Darnold. But again, I just I don't know. I feel better about this because it was easier for me to sign Sam Darnold or you could sign a Justin Fields, bring some sort of competition at the quarterback position just with where they're at as a roster build right now. I just don't think it makes sense to go out and draft a quarterback at number two or wherever they're picking in the top five. That's where I'm at right now for the Tennessee Titans fans. Uh, let me know what you think, agree or disagree on that. I think that's going to be the most controversial spot of this video and overall rebuild process. But for me personally, I don't know if there's a surefire player to take. And I, I like this quarterback class. I think it's better than people are, are estimating. I certainly think there could be a franchise quarterback or two that comes from the class. Ultimately, though, you know, am I am I comfortable with that and where the roster is at at the moment? I don't want to leave a gaping hole at that right tackle position either. And at receiver, there's some holes. So that's ultimately why I decided to go this route, and at least for another season. Then you could look at that 2026 if Sam Darnold doesn't work out or Will Levis isn't still working out. But Will Campbell gives you that bookend tackles groups for the future. And I feel really good about this offensive line now going forward. And then obviously adding Trey Harris to be another receiver, hopefully being that more that big bodied possession style, a guy with those strong hands that he has with Calvin Ridley. Maybe you bounce back here too with Sam Darnold, Nick Westbrook, Akine, Noah Brown, and Trey Burks are going to compete for that third wide receiver position and give you that rotation in there. Feel good at their tight end rooms, fine. And uh, going on to the defense side of the ball, we added in some more help at that safety room for the future with Keon Saab, nice developmental safety, and then he'll take over for Jordan Fuller after a year. Or if you re-sign him and let go of Amani Hooker, which I think they would re-sign Amani Hooker, and then you keep Keon Saab as your future free safety there. And that'd be a nice one to punch. Sage Ryan also can develop there and give you some good special teams ability. In the defensive line-wise, we had in two players there with Riley Mills on the interior, giving them some more depth behind Tayshawn Warden. And then Derek Moore will be a really nice rotational player early on in his career. And with that size profile and athleticism, he'll be a nice developmental piece that could be that long-term Arden Key starter for them. So that's kind of what we were able to do in this draft. Let me know what you think and what would you do differently for this Tennessee Titans fans. But hopefully we can get this thing on the right direction, running in the right direction, right should I say, Rand Catheron. But I like him as a GM, and I certainly think there, there's some reason for optimism here. So hope you guys have a cool day. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing, and I'll talk to you later.